Hi, this is Sylvia. Today I'm going to show you how to set up your Flash Air wireless SD memory card on your computer so that you can um, transfer files to your destiny without using any other embroidery software or other devices. This card should work with your destiny. It should work with Destiny 2. It actually is going to work with any device in your house that has an SD card slot and you can turn it into a wireless access point. These cards are typically used for printers or for cameras, but we're using ours in our sewing machine. So I will have directions for this for the PC as well as the Mac, but for the demonstration I'm going to be using my Mac today. So this is the card that you're going to want. It is a Toshiba Flash Air. You want to make sure it's a W03. There are now four versions of this card. A new one just came out last month. I don't know what version 4 has on it. It's got new features, but we want the version 3. The previous versions 1 and 2 don't have the functionality we need for this. So that's your card. And I happen to have this card because I thought my LAN card was going bad and it turned out to be our own networking issues. So I would ordered this card from Amazon. It is about $32, Amazon Prime, and I will have a link to this in our instructions as well. The other thing you're going to need is an SD card reader, something like this. This one's a little bit old. Um, it's a USB plug into your machine and it has slots to read. This one has an SD card slot as well as a micro SD card slot. These are maybe $10, $12 on Amazon. I will have a link to this one or something similar in the instructions as well. Okay. So let's open up our card here. This is it. It's um, got a unique notch edge so that it can only go into your machine or your device one way. It does have a, right, a little yellow tab for writing. We're going to keep that facing up and it does say WD03 on it. Again, that's going to have the features that we want. I do tend to take a picture of the back of my card because it's got a lot of writing, but what's important, and it's in tiny writing, is this MAC with a number. And the MAC address is a unique identifier for a device on a network. So if you're having problems connecting or anything like that, and you look at your router, you're going to look for that machine address, the MAC address, to um, find out if, that, if this card is working or not. So I do take a picture of it so that I can um, reference it if needed, because once it's in my machine, my sewing machine, I don't take it out. So I'm going to put that into my little reader slot and put that on my machine and it should show up on my desktop if I put it in nice and tight. Let's see if you can zoom in here. It's too much, too much, sorry. Okay. So it is there on my machine right here. And it looks like it has two files, but what you don't see on here is that there are hidden files on this card. And before we make any changes, it's always a good idea to make a backup. Backups are very good ideas. So I'm going to make a backup of this before we do any changes. So I open up another window in my finder. Um, in my directory, I'm just going to make another directory called uh, Flash Air Backup. So I'm going to Put the contents of this card on here. Now to make sure I get all the hidden files, I need to see them. And on the Mac, the way you do it to see hidden files, let me show you the keyboard here, you press and hold down the command key, press and hold down the shift, press and hold down the greater than sign, which is over the period, and then you can see more files showed up. They're lighter gray, meaning that they are hidden, but I want all of those. So I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to right click it and say copy. Where copy five items right there. I want to come over to my guy here and say paste. So whatever's on that card, whether you have four or five items, everything is copied. So therefore I'm not worried about if I make a mistake, I can always go back and start over. Okay. Now the other thing we need to do is edit the configuration file. The way we're going to set up this card, when I was re researching this, I found a good article that was explaining how to how this flash art card is configured. And this, this article talked about setting it up with your printer. And this card allows you to go in different modes. The default mode is what is called um, an access point, which is you just 
plug it in and you have to log into its network and then you can see what's on there. I prefer the station mode, which this one has, which is this picture here. And this allows you to log on to your home network as usual, but you can use your home network to access the flashcard, which is going to be at our sewing machine. So as long as you're on your home Wi-Fi, you can get to it no problem, and you don't have to log out of your home network to get to that one. And you can see here I'm logged into my home network, and I'm going to stay there. So that's what we're going to do. So we need to edit this file. Let me go back to my file here. The configuration file is in a hidden directory, of course. So it's under this sd underscore wlan. That's the config file right there. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to open it with a plain text editor. It's a text file. I don't want to run it. I just want to uh, edit it. It's my daughter. So I go under other because I didn't see text edit listed and it opens up the application folder and there's my text edit that I want. Okay. Um, just a minute here. Let me go find my daughter. Uh, why? Okay. So this is the configuration file and it's set up to an access point, which in this case happens to be app mode 4. These are different parameters and we'll go through it. The ones you want to keep from your original one is this version number. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see what I'm looking at here. Okay, the version number, which is the, the version of the firmware that's on your card, and the CID, which is your unique identifier for your card. You want to keep those. So I'm going to keep those and delete the other lines. I don't want this one, this one, this one. I'm going to replace it with my own stuff. So I keep the line vendor, I keep version, I keep CID. Product and vendor, um, we can keep those or delete them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them back in. So those are the two which are unique to my configuration file. And in the directions, I'm going to have a sample file which has the parameters that you need. And right now it's called Flash Air Sample. And it's just a text file. Whoops. Let me go back. This one right here. So this is it. And what it says on there is that you need to copy the contents that are below these parameters into your config file. You don't want to overwrite your CID or the version lines. So those are not in this one because everybody should be maybe neat. So I'm going to take right select it all there, copy, come over here, and paste. The order of these parameters doesn't matter. What matters is that they're specified. So we can go through these and explain what they each mean so you know what you're doing. Okay, app mode. This is a different modes for this card. App mode is number five, which is the station mode, which was that picture that I showed you. That's what we want. This is specified by app mode five. The product is Flash Air, that's standard. The vendor is Toshiba, Oops. that one is standard. The app name, we call it Flash Air in lowercase. If you have more than one Flash Air card, you can name it something different. In this one, we're naming it Flash Air, and that's how we get it. Master code is the default password for making changes on this card if you were run, to run the Toshiba configuration utility. Um, the password is the default is one two three four five six seven eight and that's what I just keep it there. This next line says lock equals one and lock indicates that your default configuration has been enabled. One is enabled, so I'm saying yes, it is. This is my default configuration. The next line is web dav equals two, and this just specifies that you can enable your flashcard to take writes as well as reads. A lot of times these cards are used for cameras and you can read photos off of it, but you can't write anything back to your camera and that's okay. So we want web dev equals two, which means this is the mode where I'm going to read and write. And in order to get that to work, I need to specify the next line, which is upload equals one. One is enabled. So yes, I can upload. This next line is app app auto time. It does not really affect mode five, but I have it in there because if in the future something changes, I want to make sure I have it set to zero. And that is my timeout for when my network will go down. It's in the number of minutes. 
sometimes five, ten minutes of inactivity, your network's going to shut down. I have it set to zero so that as long as it's in, indefinite, so as long as my machine is up, my network should be up. I then specify up dir, which is my upload directory. I'm going to make one that's called slash designs. And then these are the two parameters you're going to change. Your apps, SID is the name of your home network. Okay, it's the one that you log into. So over here, I have, I have uh, where I'm logged into, I'm logged into Gould Extreme. And that is the one that I'm going to specify in my file over here. Okay, and then the next word is your password. My password's really long, so this is where usually the errors come in is that I've typed it wrong. But I'm gonna turn the camera for just a second while I input the password. And after I do that, I'm gonna say file, here, file, save, file, save, file, close. So let's just turn the camera a second and take the password. Now, when you close it, you might get a warning that says this volume doesn't support versions, which means I can't go back. And that's okay because I have saved it as my backup copy. So I did that and it closed it. Um, I'm going to close out my sample text. I don't need that anymore. That should be it. You should be all set. And the way you do that is you need to power down your flash air card and start it back up. So I'm going to eject the drive. disappears. Take it out. Give it a second. Put it back in. And there it is. Oh, you know what else we need to do? So I know that works. I forgot to make my designs directory. So my flash air card is loaded. I'm going to turn off the hidden files because I don't want to mess with those. So these are those two original directories. I don't want either one of those. I'm going to select each and delete it, make a new directory, and I had said it was called designs. There. Okay, now I'm going to power down and start it back up again just to make sure all changes take effect. Take it out. Put it back in. All right, that should be it. Now the way to check this is to bring up a browser and we had called it flash air that lowercase flash air was my app name so i'm going to type in flash air dot local which means it's going to be my local system here and if i just press enter it should bring up the root directory which it did i have my designs directory so we know that works yay okay there's another command called upload but that one um I'm going to run that once I get it in my machine, and that's how you can copy files over. So I'm pretty sure that's working. I'm going to eject the drive again, and I'm going to put it into my machine. So let's take it over to my sewing machine. All right, pop my card out. I'm going to take my tripod over here too. All right. Let's see. Can you see that? Okay. I'm going to. The side door is open. It only fits in one way in your card. In your slot. Push it in, close the door, and turn on your machine. I can check and make sure my card is loaded. There it is, it's the designs card, and that's that hidden system directory. Destiny sees it. It doesn't see the config file that's inside of it, but it sees that hidden directory. I don't mess with that one. I'm gonna look at designs, and there's nothing. So let's go back and copy a file and see how that works. Okay, I'm going to zoom in if you can see it there. flashshare.local slash upload dot cgi. This is a little file that you can run and it brings up a simple interface. I'm going to select a file. 
like I say, I want this, um, another monogram. This is like, uh, I'll just make somebody's initials here. And I'm going to send it, and you're going to notice the status go across, and my file will disappear. It's pretty fast. Gone. Close it here. designs and there it is so that's how you do it, it worked no problem thanks bye bye